What's up, everyone? We're gonna rebuild this Charboro grill, and it's pretty um pretty used. Uh, I've had it about a brand new. It's in great condition, except for the burners. Burners never stay really good really long. Let me show you. Now look at that. Oh. All right. So when we look at this, guys, we pull this thing apart. This is the condition. But here's the major problem. When you look at it. You see how that one fell down? So I need to build another bracket. That one's fall down. And this one, this one's up. So I got two up and two down. And so that's gonna give us a guide. Those two that are up, this one that's up and that one's up, we're gonna give us a guide. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of this angle iron and we're gonna put a cross there and that's gonna allow us to drill to it. We'll know where to put our holes. We're gonna rivet it in. You can buy a pop rivet little gun for almost nothing. It's real simple, but we got some things that are still good. Like we still got the venting. The venting's still real good. The, the bottom's still good. Even that little part right here. So the, the cabinet's made really well. So we're gonna clean all this out of there. We're gonna clean up the top. We're gonna put those off the side because those are seasoned well. So we're gonna put those over on the arm. Um, on the fire pit to keep them good and we're gonna we're gonna rebuild this we're gonna get all the staining off there shine it up real nice and it's gonna be really good we're gonna have a fun time doing it little goodies and i'm gonna sh show you guys the packing list so you know what i bought okay 23 that's what i paid for and here's the one on the sears that was bought from charbro as you can see that one this one was bought from Sears. I just bought whoever's cheapest. Oh yeah, you can see my address. Come to my house. I, 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 I dare anybody, come to my house. You can tell my name and Google, my address will come up. So I ain't afraid. So we got all the tubes, we got the covers, and we got the crossover member um, items. I would have bought the, um, the, the vents, but I didn't think about it. But that's fine. This is, this is plenty. That will work for us. That's going to make a really nice rebuild. And as you can see, there's a part in that one. There's a part number on the crossover tubes. Everything made in China. All right, because this thing is filthy, we got to get all this out of here. And we're going to. We're gonna clean all this. So, oh, look at there, there's the igniter. I wanna save that. That one right there, gotta save that one. Hopefully, I bought the right one. I bought a kit, so I should be fine. If not, then I will I will get some wire and fix it up. I'm gonna fix it up either way. Oh, it clamps on. No, it clamps on. Okay, so I just need to get that off of there because it clamped on. See where it clamps on right there? Just unclamp it. You can save it because they're all the same. I, was fixed to say, I thought the crossover tubes were all the same. You see how that has the indentions in it right there? See the indention? That's where you clamp it on. So I'll remove that and save that. All right. That's a good thing to save. Remember, save all your little things right here because you'll need, you'll need those back. Those just kind of go in there. Let's take them out for now. All right. So we're going to take all these out. I don't care if it breaks. They just go in there to hold the vents up. I just need them out of there. Most of them broken anyway. We'll put them back and we'll just leave little gaps. They'll be fine. They're not as important as you think they are. All right, we'll clean all this up and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it. It's gonna make it look great. But all this other crap, throw it all away, except for these little plates. Keep your little plates. Set those off to the side. So some of the tools I'm gonna be using is just a drill set. I'm gonna just use a normal drill, screwdriver. Uh, Black Max, that's the cool cleaner. That's what's gonna get everything clean. And I'll fill it up a 6% of cool cleaner and the rest water. Sometimes three to one, but usually six to one. And some cotter pins. And so the main, the, the biggest problem that you have here is that you don't have any more of these legs. And that's what we're gonna recreate with the angle iron is we're gonna give it a ledge for it to go onto. And, and if we notice, we put that down there. A lot of wind today, so what we want to do is 
throw all the pieces away that you don't want. And we want to start scraping out as much as this can. Make sure you have an old box or something that you can put it in. And just scrape it out. You want to get as much of it as you can. Try to get as much out. A lot of it's going to spill underneath, and we'll just take a hose, rinse it out. Now this will not get it shiny, 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 but it's going to do a pretty good job. And just remember, let me get this out and show it to you. To get that little piece out right there, I just used a screwdriver. It was real, real careful. It was real slow, just pried it off. It's always better to do this on a hot day, that way it can dry out faster. All that sediment. You gotta get, you gotta get that out of there. And in order for this coal cleaner to work, it has to be kind of wet. It, it's best if you do a pre-spray. Where it's already kind of moist, so, so that way it can sit on top and doesn't soak in. And it's just gonna go all over the underside of it, so that's fine too. Just rinse it off everything. This needs a good cleaning out anyway. I got it kind of where it's sloping forward, so that kind of helps out. this old spatula here that you can just dig the stuff out of the bottle with. Dig all that out, get it all cleaned out because we're going to start this thing fresh. And refilling a barbecue pit is something anybody can do. Anybody can do this. You can go down to any air conditioning supply store and buy that black mask. And I know y'all gonna say, Riley, what are you doing using that black max on it? Well, I'm gonna give it a good burn out and that's gonna burn any of it out that I don't get. And you don't mix it up too, too strong. You'll be fine, I promise you. If I come rebuild your grill at your house, guess what I'm gonna do? Use that black max. You won't know the difference when you're eating your steak. You'll just be happy it's rebuilt. Put your, um, put your water in there first. If you put your black max in there first, it's gonna foam up. And I just kind of eyeball it. Probably mix it up a little stronger than what I need to. Let me set that down. This stuff will burn your skin. It will not scar your skin. I don't know. If you left it on there long enough, it may. All right, right there. That'll be good. Pop that back in there just like this. And I apologize for the wind. It's just a windy day. We just got to put up with it. This is the day I want to do it. I finally got enough of, enough of this grill cooking on it, all messed up. So you see it foaming out around there? And that's just me putting it on there. I can feel it on my skin. 
spilled a little bit out. Carry a rag, wipe it off. Get it off your skin. Always have a rag on you when you're doing this. You get it off your skin and hurry. But the bottle, don't worry. I've used this for my bug spray to spray my plants with. Yeah, organic stuff, you know. Sure has to be real healthy, me eating on that. Comment about it if you don't like it. I'm sure you will. I just don't care. Because I'm going to burn this thing out for about an hour after I get done. That's going to that's gonna fix everything right on up. Got everything in it. You want to get that metal shiny. I'm wearing flip-flops, so do not get it on your feet if you decide to wear flip-flops. Oh, you can smell it. Close this up. Woo. Smells strong. Got on my legs. You can just feel it. Just like it's like it's like acid. It's not an acid, it's a non-acid form, but it feels like it. it. Feels like it's eating it up. It'll cut that grease right on off, then it'll shine everything right on up. You don't have to sit very long. You might have to do it two or three times. And then what I like to do is take a rag and wipe it off. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's a barbecue pit. It just has to look better than what it did. And it will. It's already shined up a whole lot nicer than what it was. You do not want it to dry on there. You see how it starts showing that white foamy color? And all this is going to do is peel off all the loose stuff for you.
that's looking good. Get this back side. Makes it cleaner to work on too, you know? Not so dirty. So after you pretty much do that, just get your rag and just wipe whatever comes off of it. It's usually just not a whole lot of anything. It's a little bit of little stuff. Just wipe it down. A lot of it's just on there hard and that's just going to be what it's going to be. Nothing you can really do. You're going to burn it out the rest of the way. Okay. Now let's come in and take a look at it. These little guys right here, we're gonna cut those off with an angle iron, okay? Angle grinder. And we wanna cut them off so they still have a little bit of ledge on them. We just wanna cut them right in front of that little piece right there. I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. Fixed up, people. Wear safety glasses if you must. Okay, it does not have to be super precise. It just has to be where you have a little bit of a ledge right there and right there. Those aren't pretty cuts. Those are just cuts. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our drill and we're gonna drill right there. Put a drill hole right there and put a drill hole right there. drilling the hole we got to make sure that the hole is bigger than the rivet but not so big that the that this the um the sleeve's gonna go through so I got one about it's a good size bigger but it's still smaller than what the sleeve is so just put it right there in the middle of it a little lower than the other two One. We're not measuring. We're just putting it up there. Now we're gonna have to use Mr. Angle Iron again. Like I said, you do not have to measure. Just get it close. You know, the burners are only from there to there. So if we cut this guy right here, we're gonna be good. It doesn't have to be precise. Make a marking with something hard. Scratch it, just like that. Get your angle iron and make it good. Fixing something doesn't always mean you have to be super freaking precise. You just have to get it done. It's hard to do. 
one handed. Here we go. And you make sure to keep it away from your eyes. You don't want to be digging that crap out your eyes. It's really important. I've had metal cut out, taken out of my eye before. It sucks. So, once that's done, break it off. Oh, just like that. Okay, what you want to do now is you need to mark it on the other side. So what I do here is I'll come through, I got the hole already. Put it back up there, hold it like that. Mark one, come over, mark the other one. One marked. It looks like we have to do them one at a time. Once you got one marked, you can pull it out and do it from up here. It's easier. Get them shavings off of there. Another good reason to always have a towel. Get rid of all the shavings. Okay, so that one's done. Get your water hose and get rid of your shavings. You don't want that crap going into your food or anything like that. Okay. So now what we'll do, since we already have one done, we'll get a rivet. And what you need on the other side of the rivet to hold it really good is a, these have to be steel rivets. You cannot use aluminum. You gotta have a, a little washer for the other side. And so what we'll do is we'll make it, cause this side will be flush and flat. And this side I'll have a dip. <coughs> we'll come through this side like this. Just like that. Put that right there. And so that way all that's on the interior side. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, we're gonna do that. Let me go get my rivet gun. I left it in the truck. My rivet gun is a Harbor Freight Special. It is not anything special. You don't need a special high-end rivet gun. Go to Harbor Freight, buy your stuff. You probably use it on 100 projects. So that's what it looks like right there. Just like that. We're going to come around, and I'm going to show you how I pop it on. Okay, so what you do is you just will pop it on like that, but what you got to do is let me raise this back up make sure it's nice and tight see it's not tight so you have to hold it on the other side okay so just like that and you want to hold it tight on one side and then you just want to squeeze down one good motion one more time and it should break it Well, that, that, that worked out horrible. I should have put a washer on the other side. That is probably the worst rivet I've ever put in. Let me keep going. I'll probably have to drill that one out and start over. Yep. You know what? I probably won't drill it out and start over. 
Let me show you what I can do to fix that. If that happens and you screw it up because the metal's bad, it's just a little weak, and you push through the metal a little bit, which I did. I pushed through the metal a little bit so it's not gonna hold it tight. Drill more holes and put more rivets in. Do you do it until it does get held tight. Now I can see that drill hole on the other side. I feel confident I can hit it like this. Yep, see, hit it perfectly. Just because I can see down through that crack and I can get to it. Now this time, I'm gonna put one of these washers on each side. And that should make a huge difference for me. I can't believe that that metal pushed right on through. How crazy. Won't come out the rib again. That is my luck. Okay, good. Got it, got it to come out. Did it come out? It's stuck in the other side. There you go. Why? Give me such a hard time about putting a rivet in. enough room. Just barely. There we go. Hit the grab. That was proper. Hard to get them out. All right. I mean, that is really good there. Is it going as beautiful as I like it to go? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to go all crazy beautiful. It just needs to happen. Now, since I know it's not gonna go good from the other side, and I quite don't have enough length to put two washers, I'm gonna go from the other end. There you go, got that one out of there. So here's what I mean, I'll show you. We're gonna make this work. Cause I can put three more in here. Rinse out all your shavings. Get them out of there. So that way you don't get them on your face and your eyes. Or Go from the rear. Pop you one on this side. Much. Has a lot more room that way. Come right here. A lot smoother that time. You see, that's not going anywhere. When it all fails, keep trying different approaches until you find the approach that works. Not every approach is gonna work. I mean, there's, there's no easy way to rebuild a grill. You just gotta keep going with it until you get it. Put the washer on the backside. You always need to use a washer when using a ribbon. It's really important. It'll get you a better result. Once you squeeze down the first time, the washer is going to stay in place because it starts to mushroom. One more. That won't go anywhere, guys. That's going to be rock solid. Since we use the other brackets as our guide, it's going to be straight.
can be level because there's no ground you're sitting on that's level. So sometimes you have to use a guide that's inside the barbecue pit. So I'm kind of holding it on with my other finger on the other hand, getting it going this way. And now I have had this rip gun a long time, for five years. So if you buy a rip gun, look at it as an investment. This is a cheap rip gun too. This is one from Harbor Freight. Okay, why would I use rivet over a screw? Because a rivet's permanently there. Screws, when they heat, they, um, the threads start going bad. Threads will start melting. Threads are usually weaker than the thicker parts of it. Rivet, totally different. Nice steel rivet, can handle about 1100 degrees. You got a grill that does more than 1100 degrees, you're gonna have to go to stainless. And stainless could do about 1500, that's about it. Nobody has a grill that's more than that. Even those high-end steak grills only get about 1,000 degrees, 900,000 degrees. So usually a plain steel rivet's fine. So now, what are we doing next? We're gonna get our tubes. Like I said, this is not rocket scientists. And then the people that package these tubes package them a little heavy duty. Here's our tube right here. So it goes down like that. Well, it goes up, up like that. So to see this little curved part? That goes up. This little part right here, clamp it on. Do that thing first thing. Clamp on one side and just pinch it around. Okay, so that's on there. Put it onto the valve. So what we'll do is this, because it just barely fits onto the end right there. That's all we need it to do. We don't need it any bit more than that. Just enough to hold. It's gonna straighten yourself. Use that hole, that slit that's in the bottom right there to guide yourself straight, put you a hole in there. So we've got the mark right there where we want it. Long as you don't, long as you leave a little piece of the metal, let me rinse that off and I'll show you. See how I left a little piece of that metal in that hole right there? You can see it's just a barrier. That's all I need. That's all I need. Now you gotta have a cotter pin. So your cotter pin, put this back in place. Get your cotter pin. Here again, I'm afraid. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It doesn't take a big cotter pin. Just use a use the biggest one you can. Uh, let's see if we can get the bigger the better because it can handle more heat. Is that too big? And if it's too big, I'm gonna try again just to drill a hole through it. But if I can get just a bigger hole, I can put that bigger cotter pin. Hold that drill to the side like that. Broke that drill bit. Okay, so I got that one a little larger. Might have to try a different technique because I can't keep breaking drill bits. But that is working. That is working for me. Oh, I'll break that drill bit all together. Uh, probably need to use a smaller drill bit. That's the problem. Go one size down. Yeah, there you go. Make sure that cotter pin's gonna go through. 
I like the size cotter pin. Oh yeah. That cotter pin will go through, put our clamp back on. Okay, perfect. Through and just bend it over. Boom. There, you're done. You can test it to make sure that it's going to flow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. In fact, we'll try it out. Oh, you know what? I, I think it'll spark. Let's see if it'll spark. Yeah. Yeah, there it goes. Perfect. So we'll know that, that that will work. That is one down. Got to do the rest of them. So let's go through it and do it. Now you know the technique. I go a little faster. Can't believe I broke another one. I am on a roll. And cut the hand. Look at that. Look, just nicked it barely. I still got the mark right there in this one. We're gonna push that one all through. Let me switch this out. You know, I've wallered out with a really small one. That little spot's still bleeding good. See the bigger one through it. No, uh, I should stop doing that. I'm going to have to get my other drill bit set out. I'm blowing through drill bits. Here we go. it over. That's two done. Let's see if I have another good drill bit. Look at there and I do. Last one. I ain't breaking this one up. I'm going to have to switch between those two. breaking the drill bit. Will my size cotter pin work that I want? Bam! Sure will. Rinse it off and
Now this, this repair will be a really good repair. Do not use your old brackets. Don't use them. They will not work. You won't get, see I got two years out of this originally. If I want another two years because the, the actual cabinet's in great shape, you're going to have to build, rebuild some of it. It is fairly cheap, man. This whole thing cost me about 70 bucks. A new, a new grill would cost me a lot more than that. All right, last one. old drill bit set so if I sit here break them break them break them, I don't care <coughs> Sears was still open I'd go take it back some of they broke that's why I just went out of business we'll bring them back there break something Sears would be like fine I'll take it back no problem you know you probably destroyed it at your house we don't care All seriousness, you guys know I got a con I got big contracts with Sears Steel, and they're not as big as they once were. But um, I worked for them for a long time. I like Sears a lot, but I even been up to the corporate office twice. So you hear me joking on them, but I can joke on them. I can joke on them. I, I, I deserve that right. Okay, you crossover. You got to make sure you always buy the crossover members. You're gonna set those in between there, just like that. And what that does is that's going to push the flame from one side to the other. And I can't remember what side's which. Nah, I kind of like them like that. Let's put them like that. It don't really matter. They're just, a, they're just a, put them all the same, same way if you're going to do them. And you don't need four of these. You don't need three of these. They go on top of each other like that. There's some crossover members and they suck, but these are actually pretty nice. Then they come with these little stainless steel pins. Make sure to put your pin on there to hold them on. Pins look like this. Just put them through there. You just could have raised them up just a little bit more to make it a little easier to put them on. That's life, ain't it? Okay, push them down. Push them down a good bit. You can get them on there. Okay, I see. Put some weight on them and push them down. Get one little end in and turn them to the side. Turn them so the hole's pointing this way. A lot easier. I kind of start them going the same direction as the um the pipes, then I turn them immediately, and boom, they're on. The end ones are really easy. Now you see how fast I rebuilt this, just playing around, it takes a lot longer when you're doing a video. But you see how fast I did that? That is nothing, anybody could do that. That's solid, that's not going anywhere. Those are all on there, everything's been rebuilt. Alright everyone, so I got everything put up. The only thing I got left to do is um, I put those little brackets all above the vents and that's just, uh, it's just a pretty. See the little vent holes, you put these over them and it gives it still gives it air space but you can't really see it. Drippings don't really fall underneath your thing. They kind of go down into the proper dripping hole right there. And just put these guys in. That's it, they go just like that. 
And if you don't buy these, you can use your old ones to save some money because they're not cheap. But they're like eight bucks a piece. And for, uh, you're already spending, you know, look, everything cost me 70 bucks to do this. I want it to look nice. The old ones would have just, we well, wouldn't have made two years. See, I want it to make two years one more time. This is just enough to make two years. And I'm gonna show you guys, it lights up pretty good. It's not 100% perfect. It's not a new grill. It's not gonna be perfect. Oh, came right up that time. So. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but they all lit up. Yeah, you can see it right there. See how nice that is? Look at that. Look how nice those look. All the way across. Nice blue frame all the way across. Okay, guys. I appreciate y'all so much. Like and subscribe. And you can, build, you can rebuild your own grill. Anybody can do this. This is not hard. With just 20 bucks worth of tools, you don't have to have an angle grinder. You can use a hacksaw, a cheap $5 hacksaw. I just happen to have an angle grinder. But if not, use a hacksaw. You'll get right through it. You can do it. Do your own projects. Don't buy anything new. Always fix it until there's nothing left. That's what I believe in, people. I appreciate y'all so much. Like and subscribe.